Okay, so one of the ways that you can get your um, sketch down to start your painting is to just draw it um, by looking at it. And uh, most people, I guess, have done this all their lives and some of them have never tried this and um, don't really know where to begin. So I'll just explain how I go about this. If you're taking a picture, a reference picture, and say you need a starting point, like I would start with this branch here and it's you know almost halfway down the page but not quite so I would make a starting point here and then over here kind of the same it's almost the same yep it's almost the same so I would do that here and then kind of sketch out that this is going to come through the page and it drops down just sketch it out here and then it ends up over here this is where I would begin okay just do it lightly for now and then your bird you measure okay he's about this fat which is one almost two but not quite so we're gonna go in let's see let's do, I'm gonna put him a little bit wider here and he is about He's a little bit taller than he is wide. So we're going to go like this. He's Let's see. Come up here. So you eyeball everything out in measurement scales. You look at it and try and figure out by looking at it what it. And then you start drawing what you see. So we do this. That's his little wing. Let's see, his head is. comes around. Let's see, this comes in slightly, but not a lot. It's pretty rounded. It's got a leg that comes out here. And then I kind of measure how far his beak is. So his beak is about two beaks down to his eyeball. About right here. And is it halfway? Mm -mm. So I'm measuring the edge of his beak to the back of his head. And his eye, the back of his eye is about halfway. So the back of his eye here is about halfway. So his eye is here. And then you add in the shapes that you're seeing. And then this 
part up here above his eye comes in, curves in almost, almost like with a curve around his back of his eye. So we do this. Okay. This flips up to his beak. Let's see this actually. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out how wide is. So if we measure the white part on the top of his head, and the bottom white part is a little bit longer. So this has to come down a little bit further yet. Okay, that's more of a an ovaly shape. And then from there, his wing is a little bit longer than that. So the bottom of this is actually coming up a little bit higher. So as you can see, this process is very time consuming. Works great, but this is not my first choice of sketching out my paintings. Because when I do uh, commission jobs, or work that I need to get done quite quickly, I don't have the time or the patience for all of this. And then I would measure if the bottom of his wing is actually lining up with the bottom of this wing, and it's not. It is the bottom. It's actually with the bottom here. So that other little wing comes out there. Oops, I think I made him a little too fat. Gotta remember where I was coming in here. And the wing width length is about the same. Yep. As to where his leg starts to come down. You start getting your sketch in here. Let's see, the tail comes. Shorter than this. Yep. And it's about halfway.
think I need him a little bit longer than he needed to be. His head's a little bit squattier than that. There, that looks a little bit better. And then this should be a little bit. Okay, and then your leaves can come in. However, leaves are just, those are easy to paint. They're just kind of fun. You can put them wherever you want them. There's no special rhyme or reason to them ever. And you can do whatever you want to make those pretty in the end with your colors when you're painting. Obviously, if this was a charcoal drawing, I would spend lots and lots more time doing this and figuring out my placements and measuring, doing background and values, but I'm just trying to teach you a little bit about getting your initial sketch in to start a painting. Okay?
So that's how you would eyeball to get an initial sketch out of something. You just measure things. Go around and adjust them. Until you get it to look the way you want it to look. Okay? So that's how you do just um, a quick sketch to start your painting if this is the method that you choose to use to lay it down with. Okay, so another method for getting your basic drawing down um, before you start painting is called a grid method. I've never used the grid method personally, so uh, I'm not going to be an expert on this at all. <laughs> I know there's tutorials out there online, and there's actually apps um, in the app stores to help you create a grid on top of a photo. Um, but basically, you create squares on top of your picture, and then you also create squares on the paper or the surface that you're going to be drawing on that matches the number of squares in your picture. So think of it as um, one of those pictures in the old puzzle books where you would draw what's in the squares and then the picture would be perfect when you were done because you would match exactly what's in the squares. It trains your bra brain to not look at the image as an entire image, but only looking at shapes. Um, because that's what drawing is about. It's looking at shapes um, in negative spaces. Because our mind's eye has an idea of what things look like, and we tend to draw them that way out of proportion. So you have to learn to forget what you know in your head something looks like and learn to look at the shapes to understand it better. So basically for this you would count out your squares. So I would start, I don't know, wherever. One, two, three. Three down. One, two, three. And then one, two, three, four. Say four in. So this one square here, oops, I think I said it was this one, just starts almost to the top, doesn't quite go all the way in, whoops, and then it curves here, and then there's a little, looks like a little leaf that at the bottom here that comes in there and then this square up here just has a curve to it and the same idea you would measure like the square how far up or how far how, how far down easy for me to say you're making your image in there. And then you could see too that this is the blue part and there's the white part and in the white it kind of curves like this. So then your next square here it just comes down and then it stops before it goes all the way. And then up in the corner, you've got this little red leaf or flower, whatever it is. And then the one below it, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but you've got part of the eye starting here. Whoops. Actually, it goes, starts here. And then... This comes in, this goes out, but it doesn't go all the way out, the beak. And you can see I made my scale 
much smaller than what the picture is. So for this grid method, it's a lot easier to, um, it's halfway, I'm going down too far, see? See, this has always been a little bit tougher for me. This is coming out here. Um, this grid method, you can make your pictures much smaller. Of course you can with any style, but and then back over in this square here, you've got the eye that continues over here. And then this curves. This is much harder for me, but it might be easier for you. I'm not sure. This comes almost to the bottom. This here. Of course, I'm drawing it sideways too. <laughs> I'm not looking at it straight on. I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm working on. This corner here, it's got to come up a little bit higher. It just has one little, little section in here on it and that's all I'm putting in this square. Hmm. So, take for example this square here, which would be this one. I'm not necessarily always looking at this bird section, but what I'm looking at is this negative space right here and the shape of this, this section right here. So if you drew that, in this one square. Which is this here. Then you're going to have what you need in that square for that bird. I just did that line on that grid too dark, but the idea is to have this sketch come to life before your eyes, right? Your bird. And then you would erase the lines and then you would do your painting. So that's something that you could play around with and uh, see if that's something that works for you. Uh, I'm not a fan, but that's for you to choose. <laughs> Some people love it. Um, I find it to be a little tedious. Another method that you can do for getting your sketch out on paper is to use um, artist graphite paper. And this is what it looks like. However, I have had mine, I'm finding, uh, for so long that mine doesn't work anymore. I had no idea that there was like an expiration on it, but apparently there is. And it's probably 20 years. <laughs> um, but it's wax free and it's called graphite artist paper and the concept is such that you would put it underneath your image and then you would trace around it and then it would have a pencil line or a graphite line traced out. Same sort of idea as doing this when you were a kid, right? And putting this down and then tracing it, tracing it on like that, except it's not messy and it's so much easier to use. Um, and I'd love to show you that, but mine's not any good anymore. I don't use it, obviously, but that product's available and it's out there for you to use. Um, so that's another method. Okay, and 
Lastly, another way of getting your images is to use a projector. Now, I happen to have an artograph, which is very well known. I, in my opinion, top of the line for artwork um, projectors. And um, this one will take several inputs. Can use uh, HDMI and my um, thumb drive and it takes uh, micro SD and SD cards as well. Um, has a converter. Does all sorts of things here. Um, there's a manual on this so it will adjust your pictures horizontally and vertically um, if they're off perspectively um, and you need to tilt them it's capable of doing that it's uh it doesn't necessarily shrink your images very well so you have to convert them yourself before you can make them much smaller but they will definitely get bigger so this is a great tool to have if you're going to do murals on a wall um because it will make very very large images and project them onto your wall this does video uh as well hooks up to your computer you can uh freeze frames in videos it's uh, i can't say enough about the auto artograph company it's actually something that i used um, back in high school when I was in commercial art and I actually did uh, job shadowing in Grand Haven for Marushka and they had these in their design department. So actually not obviously this one. They had the old dinosaur ones back in the day, but it was the Artograph brand. So um, I'll show you how this works next. Okay, so I just set this up, the projector, to project onto... Um, piece of paper on the floor. A lot of times I work on the floor. Don't ask me why. I could set this up on a table, but I guess I'm too lazy. And you can't read what that says until I focus it in. It says no signal. So what you do is you hit your input and there you have your different inputs. And I have my USB. Whoops. I hit the button again. I have it on the picture that I want to use on the USB right now. So we go to the drive and find my bird. And I resized him, so hopefully, yeah, there he is. And depending on how big or how small you want them, you can move the projector up or down. I have a tripod for it. So let's say I want them a little bit bigger. I'll just loosen up the legs on this. Pull them up a little. And let's see, focus, make sure he's in focus, and then obviously you just sketch around him, and just get your basic shapes in, and your placement. of your painting. This works well when you have a very busy, busy picture. Not necessarily 
this bird, the sketch that I did in the beginning, by eyeballing it was probably sufficient. But this is just another way of showing you there's another option out there. And actually, I don't have them in focus that well. So the branch is here. You can take as much or as little detail as you want from this. That's your prerogative on what you choose to paint and not paint from the photo. And then this projector also has a blank option, so I can see what I have done. So if I hit blank, then you can see that there's the outline. And you can see what you maybe missed or didn't, or forgot, right? Or that maybe you want to add. So that's what I like to use for my drawings. Um, just because it's easier to do more, um, doesn't take as much time to lay down my basics. And uh, that's all you need is just the basics to start with. So there are your methods for getting a starting point.